the first racist was Iblis. The first racist was Iblis. Think about it. Because what did Iblis say? I'm better than him because of my origin. It's exactly what racism is, right? I'm better than you because of my ancestry. I'm better than you because of my skin color. This is the essence of racism. So anybody who's a racist has a trait of Iblis in him. Anybody who thinks he's better than somebody else because of his ethnicity, his skin color, his language is a racist. And this racism goes back to none other than Iblis. Iblis is the founder of racism. How do we counter this? Education. There's no other way to counter bigotry and racism other than education. Being very frank and blunt about these issues and realize that, and subhanAllah, it's so sad, wallahi brothers and sisters, that racism and nationalism, this is well known, was an imperialistic tool that every single colonizer literally imposed upon us. We had no notion of nationality and racism until the British and others came and they told us, you are this, you are that. This is well known. Anybody who reads history and colonialism and what happened, this is something that is not a conspiracy theory. When the British told the Arabs of, of the uh, Arabian Peninsula, fight against the Turks, right? They were the ones who started saying, you're Arabs. How could the Turks rule over you? That notion never came to them. Look at Lawrence of Arabia. They were the ones who started nationalism. You're Arabs, you deserve your own independent you know, principality. Why should you be under the, the, the Turks, even though the Turks were Muslim? And who was the one who instigated this? Lawrence of Arabia and others of this nature. And the same thing, and honestly, now look guys, I am you know, Pakistani in terms of heritage, right? It is ludicrous, I say this as a Pakistani, it is ludicrous for a Pakistani to say, I am Pakistani first and Muslim second. SubhanAllah. Pakistan didn't exist when your father was, was alive. And you're going to give your allegiance to a piece of land? Where are the boundaries? Who derived the boundaries of these countries? The British did. This land that you call Pakistan or America, it is not a living entity that will bestow grace upon you. It's a figment of collective imagination. These lines that we draw on maps, they don't really exist in the world. They do not exist in the real world. These lines keep on moving back and forth. It's a border that has been invented by minds. What country has lasted for more than 500, 1,000 years? Think about it. What country has lasted for even 800 years? Not where? Every country rises and falls, comes and goes. It is well known when the colonizers left us, they were the ones who said divide and conquer. It's a well-known tactic, divide and conquer. More than 60 Muslim majority countries when there will used to be one ummah. When a sin becomes a daily habit, when a sin becomes a part of your daily routine, then obviously you will have no regret for that sin. You will have no remorse for that sin. It will become a part and parcel of who you are. And our Lord mentions, and the Prophet explained the verse of the Quran.